At this moment, the only thing that Valnero could think was simply, does he also have a solution that makes one invisible? Valnero was getting delighted when he suddenly remembered that there was definitely someone that had seen Jack. In other words, Jack wasn't invisible at all when he was dealing with the 14. So, how was he invisible in the footage? After thinking for a while, he looked at one of the soldiers and asked them to show him the footage of the past few minutes. After a while, the footage was in front of him. He watched it calmly but at the same time expectantly. But he was surprised that he could see that Jack was present in the footage. Furthermore, he didn't seem to be concealing anything at all. Thinking that something was wrong, Valnero went back to watching the first footage. In the end, no matter how he looked at it, he found that there was nothing that seemed out of place other than the fact that there were two invisible people killing or knocking people unconscious. And what made Valnero's lips twitch was the fact that he could clearly see the weapons that the person was carrying. The walkie-talkie that hang on the shoulder and the pistol that was being held by the invisible belt. As he looked at it, he could see that it was as if there was a person that had come with an eraser and decided to erase the person, leaving behind the weapons. This can only be a single thing. There's someone that has great computer skills and can easily make the video here as he or she likes. And that person's skills are so high that they could make it look like the video that they were watching was the original one and wasn't edited. Valnero stated, But Captain, who is it that can do that? All the computer experts of our company have tried looking, but they found that there were no loopholes at all. The vice captain that was beaten up by Jack stated, Although the company was for the soldiers, there were other people that had several skills that were from the other fields. Moreover, they were considered experts in their fields. All these experts in the computer path had tried to look into the video to see if it was edited. But in the end, they found absolutely nothing. Although they were sure that the video was edited because no matter what, there were people that had seen Jack and Denali taking action on the footage, they were both invisible. Valnero could only narrow his eyes as he thought of something. Perhaps this guy has more to him and is not as simple as he looks. Perhaps he has a team that is so good in the matters concerning technology, other than the science department. As he said these words, Valnero now began doubting that they would really find anything on Jack. He could easily have the video of him fighting edited to the extent that his best men couldn't find anything wrong with it with their skills. But there was something wrong when one looked at it. So, he could perhaps have had his information hidden. Or, he might have left behind fake information. At the end of the day, he was greatly skilled. What Valnero didn't know was the fact that he was completely right about everything other than the person behind all of this. Instead of a team, the video and the information about Jack had all been dealt with by Denali. If he knew about such a thing, Valnero would surely go out of his way to try recruiting her. After all, Denali was a person that had both strength and skills. If it was the normal attacks, she was good. And if it was the cyber attack, she could be even better. Perhaps even espionage using hacking could be possible. Leave this issue to the side at the moment. Try to find any evidence of the occurrence here today. The footage should be saved so that we can carry further investigation after we are done. Valnero stated, Yes, Captain. The soldiers around him replied, Oh, one more thing. I want the three that were found unconscious interrogated as soon as possible. And I want results. As for the fact that they always don't talk, I don't want to hear of such a result. I want to get the reason as to why they chose the hotel as their target no matter what. As he said this, Valnero was solemn. He knew that the information that was related to the incident here was going to be important. Although it might not be that important because he could tell that the group that was sent over had been sent to their deaths, at least he was sure that he could get a traitor in the country. And he wouldn't need to take action at all. He would simply let Jack take care of that traitor while he watched from the sides, trying to get a grasp of Jack's real strength. Yes, Captain. Knowing that Valnero was serious about what he had just said, the soldiers dared not to waste any more time and decided to take action immediately. Jack didn't know what was happening on Valnero's side. But he could already imagine it all because it was something that he had asked Denali to take care of. Although it was true that he had asked her to take care of the situation, he never asked her to make fun of Valnero and his group of specialists. But if he knew that this was what had happened, he would definitely thank her greatly. All right, I won't beat around the bush at the moment and I'll be clear with you. I know that there have been several casualties here, but I don't really know at the moment what happened here and what was the reason behind it. Jack continued, and as such, I would like all of you to take a break of one week. Don't come to work during this one week. You can simply relax and try getting yourselves together. As for the matters concerning your salaries and so on, there's no need to worry about that. Jack had come to this decision. 
Although he knew that closing the hotel would definitely cause several losses to him, that was nothing at all. He could recover all of that with the help of the system. Not to mention the fact that there was currently a somber atmosphere here in the hotel. He would have to wait till the situation calmed down. And he thought that a single week was enough for all his staff members to get over themselves before he began making the necessary changes. The over 30 people in the conference room were greatly surprised by Jack's words. They had never seen a boss like him before. He could actually be like this to his employees. Now, they were wondering why he had not appeared earlier. Perhaps their situation would have been better than currently. Jack waited till the noise in the room subsided before he spoke again. Now, before you leave, I would like to get all the information that I can get about the victims of today's assaults. Their families will receive the compensation from our hotel. Although I know that money and the support from our hotel won't be enough to replace the gap that the families that have lost their loved ones will have, it would at least do something at the end of the day. Jack continued. The management staff was surprised by Jack's words again. Normally, it was the government that did the compensation because the matter here was related to the public security and not the mistake that was made by the hotel. But at the end of it all, their boss had decided that he would also compensate the ones that had suffered losses here on this day. Okay, each family of the ones that have had members of their families dying here, for those that were customers, they would receive a compensation of $10 million. The moment that the amount was mentioned, the crowd couldn't stay calm anymore. $10 million was something that they couldn't touch easily, even for them as the top management of a big hotel. But now, those families that had lost their loved ones that had come to dine in the hotel here would receive $10 million each. Just how rich was their boss? They couldn't help but ask themselves. As for the ones that were part of our staff members here, their families will receive $15 million each. If they have children, anything concerning their education and health will be taken care of by the hotel. Boom. Another bomb was dropped in the hearts of those that were listening. For a moment, they almost wanted to have their family members dying here in the hotel as part of the staff. But that thought was discarded in the next moment because none of them wanted to lose someone precious to them. All right, that's with the compensation to the ones that have had their loved ones dying. Back to the normal employees of the hotel. You would all receive a bonus during the one week that you would be taking a vacation from work. As for the amount, the lowest that a person would receive would be $50,000. Jack ignored the shifting expressions and continued. The moment that he said this, they couldn't calm down at all. Although they were sad or frightened a moment ago, most of the people in the room had their mood elevated. $50,000 wasn't a small amount of money to the lower-level staff members. If the lower-level staff of the hotel could receive $50,000, then what about them, who were part of the top management staff? They wondered if there was going to be another attack on the hotel in the future. Perhaps they could receive even more money? If Jack knew what they were thinking, he would definitely make sure to fire every one of them and get another group of staff to take care of the situation here. But all the same, although he was giving out money, it wasn't that he hadn't thought things through. Since he was planning to monopolize the hotel sector, he could as well start things as early as now. By giving compensation, the reputation of the hotel that had dropped due to the deaths would surely rise a little. Although the aim of giving the compensation wasn't this, it was just a benefit that came with Jack's kindness. As for the bonus that he would be giving to his employees, that was something that he wanted to use to gain the trust of his employees. Although he was sure that not all of them would be loyal just because of the money, the ones that would be loyal were enough for him. Okay then, you will leave. But don't forget about what I said. I want to get all the information about the victims today. And I'll give you a warning. You better not try using this chance to cheat me. If you do that, your ending won't be good at all. Jack reminded. His voice was cold at the mention of being cheated. He knew that there were definitely profiteers that would try to get something from him by pretending to have someone that died being a member of their family. Right? Once you come back, I would like to get all the necessary information about our competitors. Furthermore, you should be prepared to move the location of the hotel when you come back from the vacation. Jack stated. Right? Once you come back, I would like to get all the necessary information about our competitors. Furthermore, you should be prepared to move the location of the hotel when you come back from the vacation. Jack stated. After giving a few more instructions, Jack thought that this was enough and decided to leave. As for the issues concerning the transfers that he had just mentioned, that was something that Denali would deal with. After all, there was just a lot of information that had to be dealt with and calculations that had to be added to that. That was something that Jack didn't want to touch for the moment because it reminded him of his campus life. Although it wasn't that he hated his campus life, he just didn't want to get involved with it for the moment. 
When they were leaving the building, Jack saw that Valnero was waiting for him at the entrance of the hotel. This wasn't a surprise to him because Jack was sure that Valnero hadn't seen how he had handled the guys here. What's up, Captain? Jack asked with a smile. Although the captain in front of him was a serious one to his soldiers, Jack didn't like the stiffness that came with the formalities. So, he would take things simple unless there was a need for him not to do that. Valnero's lips twitched when he saw how nonchalant Jack was. He was sure that Jack knew why he was waiting here. But, he was playing dumb. All the same, he was the one that wanted to get some information on Jack and not the other way around. So, he had to do what was needed regardless of Jack's attitude. You sure hide a lot. Valnero stated as he stared directly into Jack's eyes. Jack looked at him with a faint smile on his lips as he said, It's not that I'm hiding a lot. It's just that I won't go around telling people about me, no? So, if you want to know about me, you can just ask. Valnero asked, What secrets are you hiding? How can they be considered secrets if I can share them with you? Furthermore, secrets are meant to be kept secret. Jack replied, Hey, you said that I only had to ask. I have asked, but you are still hiding the truth from me. Valnero pressed on. No, you are wrong. I never lied in the first place. I simply didn't tell you anything. Jack shook his head and responded. Okay, I'll get straight to the point. What type of hackers do you have? Do you perhaps think that we can recruit them? Valnero asked. Although he was sure that there was no way that Jack would agree to that, he had to try his luck anyway. Well, you should know that I didn't assemble a team so that I can make it easy for someone else to recruit them, right? Jack asked in an amused tone. Before Valnero could say something else, Jack continued, Furthermore, there's no way that I can let you have an expert of mine. After all, I still need the expertise. After that, Jack left with Denali, not giving Valnero a chance to speak further. Denali was a person that he had gotten with the help of the system due to the multiplier effect. He had won a bid against Austin. And as a result, he had received Ayush who was considered a slave to Austin. With the multiplier effect on Ayush, he got Denali. And there was no way that he was going to allow someone to get his hands on her. At the end of the day, she was the one that was doing most of the things for him. If she suddenly left, he would be left with too many things that he would have to handle all by himself. He had just graduated a few months ago. So, it would be better if he could relax for a while before going back to being serious all over again. Seeing that Jack was leaving, Valnero could only shake his head in disappointment. If he could get his hands on the expert hacker from Jack's side, he was sure that the strength of his company would increase multiple fold. That was just the power of those that played the support role. With an expert that could even spy on the enemy's plans, he could handle them after full preparations were made, with low chances of failure. Robin, get the soldiers that are in charge of information to not transfer any information about Jack. I want to deal with this personally. Valnero looked at the vice captain that wasn't beaten by Jack and instructed. Yes, captain. Robin replied before he took the communicator to pass the message. Although Jack could have used the helicopter to easily get to Eden Residential Building, he thought that he couldn't leave his car here. Furthermore, if there was something that was happening there, he could simply board the helicopter at any moment. When they got into the car, Denali wanted to drive but Jack stopped her. Let me do this. You can go ahead and look into the data of Eden Residential Building. Look into the CCTV footage and see if there's any problem there. Jack stated as he took the wheel. Yes, master. Denali nodded and got into the car. She had already gotten her laptop back from the car that she had used to get here. So, she immediately began doing what Jack had instructed. Jack then began driving towards the Eden Residential Building. It wasn't that far from the hotel. It was a 40 minutes drive to get there. Luckily, the area around was by now clear of a lot of cars. In other words, the jam that was there when Jack was heading to the hotel wasn't there at the moment. As a result, Jack was able to get to the Eden Residential Building in about 15 minutes. Well, that was after Denali confirmed that there was nothing wrong there. With this, Jack could confirm that there was nobody that was targeting him specifically. If there was something that was being targeted, then that would be the Glaze Hotel that was the main one. As for the branches that were spread out in other cities, those were confirmed to be okay at the moment. Although he wasn't sure that they would be attacked soon or not, Jack was planning to have Tracy organize for a group of mercenaries to head out so that they could work as the security there. Although they were going to be the security, they wouldn't need to stand around. They would only respond to the emergencies of the hotels. But of course, this was going to be the work of the ones that were not part of the special team. When they got in front of the building, Jack couldn't help but get amazed. The system was really something. It had easily awarded him with the building. After shaking the unnecessary thoughts from his mind, 
Jack took out his phone and made a call. He was calling the manager of the residential building. And as he made the call, he and Denali began walking around, trying to get familiar with the place. Hello, boss. Elvis received the call the moment that he noticed that it was Jack was calling. Where are you at the moment? Jack asked. I'm at the residential building management office. Elvis replied. I'm currently on the first floor of the building. Could you perhaps tell me where this office can be found? Jack asked. Yes. It's on the topmost floor. Should I come and receive you? Elvis responded before asking. There's no need for that. Jack declined the offer and the two of them entered the elevator. They were heading to the topmost floor, the 50th floor. So, it would take them some time to get there even when they were using the elevator. The moment that they stepped out of the elevator, Jack noticed that there was a person that was standing in front of it. From the looks of it, he was waiting for it to be opened. He was a guy who seemed to be in his late 30s. He was currently wearing a plain white shirt, a black trouser, and a black tie. He looked somehow nervous. The moment that Elvis saw Jack, he smiled broadly and welcomed him. Hello, boss. Welcome. Jack simply nodded and looked around. Although he had never seen Elvis before, he could already tell that this was the guy due to the fact that he was here waiting for them. It was during the moment that they were getting out of the elevator that Elvis finally took notice of Denali. Not to say the least, he was enchanted by her beauty. This lady here, since Jack hadn't introduced Denali, Elvis knew nothing about her. So, he didn't know how to address her and neither did he know the relationship that she had with Jack. That's Denali. She's my personal assistant. Jack stated the moment that he noticed that Elvis was looking at Denali. Although he could see that Elvis had some interest in Denali, Jack spoke no word about it. Even though Denali was his subordinate, she too had a life to live. So, if she found someone that she liked, that was her choice. So, he wouldn't intervene in her private issues. As for whether Elvis could actually catch Denali's attention, that was something that Denali herself would decide on. When Elvis heard that Denali was Jack's personal assistant, the fire of interest that was in his eyes was immediately extinguished. Although Denali was simply Jack's personal assistant, that was a level that he couldn't compare to. In other words, he was far inferior to Denali. So, even he himself didn't believe that she could get interested in someone like him. All the same, Jack was here for a reason. He didn't come to see how the tenants here were living. He was simply here to inspect if Elvis was someone that could be trusted with the responsibility of managing the building. Elvis then went ahead to do the introduction of the topmost floor. This floor wasn't meant for people to reside in. It was made so that it could be used as a warehouse. And besides the warehouse, there were three different offices amongst which was Elvis's office. After looking around for a while, Jack finally decided to leave. But as they got into the elevator, Jack looked at Denali who then shook her head. Denali shaking her head implied that Elvis wasn't good enough to continue maintaining his position as the manager. So, although he had yet to check how things were going on here, he would simply demote Elvis and have Denali bring another person in. After getting out of here, Jack decided to have Denali take the body strengthening solution. As what he would do next, that was to definitely get to Celine so that he could give her the pill that would help her recover the sealed memories. As for those that had followed them on a helicopter, they would have to head back to GV cell to continue training. Jack and Denali got into the car. He then gave her the solution that he was remaining with. He had carried several bottles with him so far, but he had taken one and given away the others. Denali was surprised as to why Jack had given her the solution. Just like him, she had thought that the solution would be ineffective on her. Although she was wondering if it would be effective, she still knew that Jack had given her the solution so that she could take it. So, she trusted his judgment and took the solution. A warm current flowed through her body and before long, she felt the increase in strength. Before, she was akin to six men. By now, she was the same as eight men. In other words, currently, Denali was stronger than Jack. Although it wasn't by a huge margin, she was still stronger. But, Jack didn't know about that. All he knew was the fact that she was strong. Just like him, she didn't face the side effects of taking the solution. She was done the moment that she felt the increase in strength in her body. Now that this was out of the way, Jack parted with Denali. He let her continue with what she had to do because she had a lot on her plate currently. On the other hand, he took a cab and headed to where Celine was. He had already asked her and she told him that she was in the office currently. And that was definitely her mother's company. Although he didn't mind meeting Celine's mother, he wanted to do that after Celine received her memories. Not long after, Jack had arrived in front of a building. This was where Celine's cosmetics company was located in. The company was called Angel's Prominence. Although it was located in this building, the company didn't own the whole building. 
Instead, they simply owned two floors here. As for the warehouses, they were located in different places. Jack entered the building. He already knew that the company was located on the 17th and 18th floor. As for where Celine was at the moment, it was definitely the 18th floor. When he arrived at the 18th floor, he was stopped at the counter. He had to give the information on who he was here to see. I'm here to see Celine, Jack stated. The lady behind the counter looked at him weirdly. Denali was definitely well known here as the only heir of the owner of the company. As such, she was someone who was greatly respected by those who were working here. Furthermore, there were a lot of people in the same cosmetic industry that knew about her. Since she was being trained by her mother, it was obvious that she had to discuss several business deals. The lady looked at Jack and wondered if he was one of the simps that always came here trying their chance of meeting with Celine. But, at least for the others, they always came with several means such as discussing about business with her and so on. But this guy here had simply come over and stated that he wanted to see her that directly? Listen here, mister. It's not that I'm trying to look down on you or something. It's just that you will have to look for better ways of trying to hit on a girl. The lady stated. Jack, on the other hand, was surprised. What did she mean by saying that he was trying to hit on Celine? She was already his girlfriend to begin with. So, there was definitely no reason as to why he would try hitting on her. Instead, he could simply dote on her. At the end of the day, she was his girl and he had no intention of letting her go. I'm not here to try hitting on her. I'm here to meet up with her. We have had an agreement to meet up here. Jack tried to explain. The lady's expression got weirder. It wasn't the first time that she had heard someone claiming that they had planned to meet with Celine. But at the end of the day, it turned out that they were simply lying their way out, trying to find a way to meet Celine. If you are here to cause trouble, I'm afraid that I'll have to ask you to leave. The lady's expression wasn't looking good at all. If Jack had come here to discuss anything that was related to business, perhaps she might have made some considerations. But now, since Jack was here not for business but for Celine, she had no choice but to send him away. Jack sighed seeing that the lady had no intention of letting him in. That was simply the problem of trying to meet someone without having an appointment. He took out his phone and was just about to make a call to tell Celine that he had arrived when he suddenly heard a familiar voice. What's going on here? A lady's voice sounded. The lady who was behind the desk immediately turned serious. She then looked at the lady that had just appeared before pointing at Jack. This young man here has come here claiming that he was here to see Lady Celine. But, he has got no proof of that. So, I'm suspecting that he is here to cause trouble. The lady stated. At this moment, Jack's eyes were fixated on the lady that had just appeared. Apart from her voice being familiar, her appearance was the same. She was none other than Caitlin. And, although Jack couldn't remember her name simply because he had never been told, he could still remember the time that she was there with his mother. He knew that she was Celine's mother. She had been there during their childhood and had spent time with him. Third, only after his mother and Celine. And Jack had to admit that Caitlin really had almost the same appearance as Celine. Other than the difference in terms of hair color, it could be said that the two of them were a copy of the other. But of course, there was a difference. One was young while the other was mature. Caitlin looked at Jack and was stunned for a moment. Since Jack was previously facing the desk, she hadn't seen his face. But now that he had turned around, she could clearly see the familiar face. Although Jack might have forgotten about her and Celine, she was different. The last time that she had seen him was when he was 13 years old. And although he had grown over the past six years or so, there was a fact that, other than his face maturing, there was no big difference at all. The handsomeness that he had been having at the age of 13 had only increased when he reached his current age. The same silver hair, the blue eyes that she was so familiar with. At the end of the day, Caitlin had never expected that she would see Jack this early. J. Jack? Is that really you? Caitlin stuttered. Although she could tell that he was indeed Jack, there was actually the disbelief. Now, not only was Jack her daughter's playmate, but he reminded her of the friend that she had made back during the years. As for what had happened later on, she wasn't sure about that because she too had left with Celine when her memories of Jack were sealed. Yes, it's me, Aunt. Jack smiled and nodded as he replied. And that was how he used to call her back in the days before she disappeared from his memories. Ha ha ha, so it really is you. To be honest, I never expected that you would be appearing here this soon. Caitlin laughed as she spoke. The lady behind the counter and the others that noticed her laughing were extremely surprised by what they were seeing. From what they could remember, Caitlin wasn't someone that could laugh here while she was at work. No, she was someone that was ever so serious about her work. And that was what her daughter followed.
or so they believed. As for the lady behind the counter, she was already sweating buckets. She had never expected that Jack and Caitlin had such a close relationship and such that he could call her aunt. In other words, Jack was speaking the truth about having an agreement with Celine to meet here. But she was happy that she didn't say anything out of line. Otherwise, she would have been in for a good amount of trouble. But still, she knew that what would happen to her would depend on the two of them. If Jack took the situation seriously, she might as well be fired. I guess you're here for Celine? Caitlin asked. Although Caitlin had yet to know that Jack and Celine were the ones that she was trying to prevent from being together, she could still tell that he was here for Celine. At the end of the day, that was the agreement that they had had on the day that Jack's and Celine's memories got sealed. It was agreed that Jack would come to see Celine by at most when he was 20. And if that time got passed and he had yet to appear, Celine was free to do what she wanted. But of course, that would simply be because her memories would still be sealed. Yes. Jack didn't hide this and nodded. Okay then, I have a lot to talk to you about. But, you can go and look for Celine. She's in the office number four. I'm currently busy with something. So, we will have to talk later about it. Caitlin stated. Jack nodded and headed towards the direction that Caitlin had pointed towards. When he got to Celine's office, Jack knocked. Although he would have so loved to simply get in there and get Celine before she knew that he was the one that had arrived instead of her subordinate, he still had to be official. He was in her mother's company at the end of the day. Come in. Celine's nonchalant voice reached Jack's ears from the inside. From her tone, Jack could tell that she was serious. And it seemed that she was busy with something inside there. Shaking his head, Jack pushed open the door and entered. He found that Celine was seated behind her desk, busy with some documents. He looked at her profile and he had to stare for a while. Celine had a different vibe when she was in the office as compared to the one that she always had when she was out. He didn't say a word and continued observing Celine. He was here to see her and give her the pill that would unseal her memories. But all the same, he might as well enjoy himself first. Celine, who was immersed with the documents that were filling her desk, was surprised why the person that had come over didn't say a word after a long while. She wasn't afraid that there was someone who had some bad intention would come to her office unnoticed. And since this person was here and there were no issues outside, she was quite relaxed. What is it? If you have got nothing to say, you might as well leave. Without even raising her head, Celine said with an impatient tone. Jack smiled and remained silent. All the same, he approached the desk and sat in front of her. And the moment that he did that, Celine frowned. She had noticed him approaching. And when he sat down, that was something that showed that he didn't respect her authority in this office. She was just about to lash out at him when she was forced to have her mouth opening but no words flowing out. After a while, she took a deep breath and looked at Jack with a displeased expression on her face. Why didn't you tell me that you had already arrived? I would have come to pick you up personally. She stated as she looked at him. Hee hee, there's no need for that. Although I wanted to ask you about that. And arrived just in time, and she's the one that pointed me towards your office. Jack replied. Although he had been having a little problem meeting Celine due to the regulations that are placed at the counter, he didn't care about it because he had gotten what he wanted. When Celine heard him, she was stunned for a moment. Then, she looked at Jack with confusion clear on her face as she asked, Who's that aunt that you were talking about? Currently, Celine was wondering if there was Jack's relative present here in the company. And if that person was able to make Jack come to her office, then that person must have a good amount of authority in the company. Eh? Oh, I had forgotten about that. I was talking about your mother. Jack corrected himself. He had even forgotten about the fact that Celine had yet to recover her memories. In the end, she didn't know who the aunt that he was mentioning was. Jack's answer confused Celine further. She was now wondering if what Jack was saying was true. She knew her mother all too well. She wouldn't just allow any man to come and see her, especially during working hours. So, how could it be that she was the one that had actually allowed and even directed him to her office? Are you sure you were talking about my mother? And, why would you even call her aunt? I'm sure that this should be your first meeting, right? Celine asked. Well, it's kind of hard to explain. But all the same, there are things that you won't understand immediately. So take this. As Jack spoke, he took out the pill that was left after he took one of them and handed it to her. Celine looked at Jack, the confused expression on her face deepening. Then, she looked at the small pill that was in Jack's hand. She didn't know what was going on anymore. Jack, you should know that I'm not sick, right? Celine looked at Jack and asked with raised brows. Jack was taken aback by Celine's question. 
He had completely forgotten that Celine knew nothing about the pill, unlike him who had received information about it from the letter that his mother had left him. So, he could only explain slowly. I know that all right. You wanted to know why I referred to your mother as aunt, right? Just take the pill and you'll understand. Although she was doubtful about his words, she still decided to take the pill. She had absolute trust that Jack wouldn't do something that would harm her in any way. It wasn't that she was blinded or something. This was something that came from the depths of her heart. Should I use water? She asked as she looked at the small pill in her hand. Although she had taken and seen a several types of pills, the one that she was holding was one of the few that she had never seen not to mention taken. Just do as you would do with candy. Jack stated. The pill, for some reason, once it entered a person's mouth, it simply melted. So, there was no reason for the water or something. Celine took the pill immediately. And the moment that she took it, she felt it dissolving. And not long after, she felt that there was something that had happened the moment that the pill finished dissolving. And just then, something exploded in her mind. What followed immediately after that was the fact that a huge amount of information rushed into her mind. Though, there was nothing uncomfortable about it. It was as if she was recovering something that she had lost, a piece of her that was returning home. And then, images of Jack began appearing in her mind one after the other. But of course, these memories were from their childhood. Jack wasn't the only one that she remembered. She remembered even a few of his half-siblings that she had met in the past. Celine found the moments that they had shared together. The two of them, she and Jack. The time that she would always look forward to the chance of heading to Crystal City so that she could meet with Jack. Then, it was at this moment that she finally realized something. She looked at Jack who was looking back at her. She finally understood the reason as to why she felt familiar with him. The reason as to why she was so open in front of Jack unlike the other young men that she had met before. And, the reason as to why she felt that the dance style that they had used during their dance in the banquet was familiar to hers. It was simply because she and Jack had trained together. This was the arrangements that were made by their mothers. In other words, the bond that she shared with Jack was so deep, unlike what she had believed. And, amongst the memories that she had recovered, it was just inside them that she realized the reason as to why Jack had referred to her mother as aunt. That was the same way that she used to refer to Jack's mother as well. Now that she could remember about and she could confirm that the photo that Jonathan had shown to them back in Volant City was indeed hers. But now, she was extremely sad because she realized that she was dead. At the same time, several types of emotions surged into her heart and she really couldn't control herself anymore. Jack, who was waiting for Celine to go through the memories that she had recovered, was surprised that she suddenly began crying. This was something that was out of his expectations. Angel, could it be that she is facing some kind of side effects from taking the pill? Jack was worried. He got up from the chair that he was seated on and went towards Celine while asking the system about the situation. You should know that the system is not the one that gave the pill, right? Anyway, I'll help you this one time. There are absolutely no side effects that came from taking the pill. It's just that, the emotions that were sealed due to the loss of the memories that caused them gave suddenly returned. And now, she's experiencing them again. Jack sighed in relief as he took Celine into his arms. Celine fell into his embrace as she cried out. But, her cries were a mixture of sadness, anger, joy, and confusion. Jack patted her head and allowed Celine to wet his shirt with her tears. He didn't say anything after knowing about what she was experiencing. Although he too had had the explosion of the emotions that had been sealed away previously, he was able to take things calmly. He wasn't affected by much because something that could have affected him that much was definitely the death of his mother. But his memories of his mother, since he was young till her death were there to begin with. The only ones that he had lost were related to Celine. But at the end of the day, when he was recovering his memories, Celine was already his woman. After over an hour had gone by since Jack entered the office past, there was a knock on the door before the door was opened. Both Jack and Celine were surprised by the sudden intrusion of a person. But all the same, what surprised them the most was definitely that the one that had come in was Caitlin. Caitlin, who had just entered the office, was surprised by the scene of Jack holding Celine while she cried. Although it had already been some time since she began crying, she was still in Jack's arms, whimpering. Normally, when she came to Celine's office, Caitlin wouldn't even knock on the door before getting in. But today, because she knew that Jack was here, she had decided to show a little etiquette. But all the same, she really didn't understand what was going on in here. Since she had seen Jack here, she knew that this had something to do with her agreement with him. But, as to why Celine was crying in Jack's arms, that was a mystery to her. Could it be that she feels sorry that she had been trying to date another man and forgot about Jack? 
Caitlin began speculating about what was happening here. In the end, she didn't know that Jack and Celine were the ones that were dating before, and they were the ones that she was exactly trying to prevent from getting together. Can you tell me what is going on here? Caitlin asked as she took a seat on one of the chairs that were present in the office. She looked at the two of them, waiting for an answer. Seeing that her mother wasn't surprised by the fact that Jack was here and that he was holding her, but by the fact that she was crying, Celine got confused. But she confirmed that Jack was indeed directed here by her mother. Mom, could it be that you knew about me before? Although she had just recovered her memory, she didn't understand why she had lost them in the first place. Furthermore, she didn't know why she would only recover the memories only after she took the pill that Jack gave her. At this point, she was wondering if Jack had his memories all along and was simply playing around with her. But she didn't ask about that because she was still waiting for her mother to answer. Of course I knew. The two of you have been growing up together since you were young. Well, that was until when you were 13 that you separated till this day. Caitlin replied. And why were you crying? Caitlin asked. Celine, on the other hand, looked at her mother strangely. She couldn't understand why her mother was playing dumb. Of course, she had recovered her memory and she knew for the fact that the two of them grew up together. But that wasn't what she was asking about. What she was asking about was definitely if she, she knew that she had lost her memories of Jack till this very day. She had actually forgotten about something important that came from her childhood. Mom, I'm not asking about that. I'm asking if you knew that I had lost my memories of Jack and his mother. Celine stated as she got out of Jack's embrace. Eh? You have already recovered your memories. Caitlin was surprised. Although she had mentioned about the two of them growing up together, that was simply because she was trying to hint at her that she and Jack were supposed to be together. Furthermore, she was sure that Jack already knew about Celine because of the way that he referred to her as aunt. But all the same, she didn't expect that Celine would recover her memories the moment that Jack arrived. Back then, after Celine's memories of Jack and all those related to him were sealed, she and Anne had agreed that they would give the two of them a timeline till they reached 20 years old. It wasn't that Caitlin was the one that had decided on the time, it was Anne. Although she didn't know why Anne had decided on that time, she decided to trust her anyway. But, other than the fact that if Jack didn't come to look for Celine after the timeline got passed, for her to do whatever she wanted, and said nothing about Celine's memories of Jack and whatsoever, now that she had heard that Celine had recovered, she was definitely surprised by that. She could simply link it to Jack. But all the same, she was happy that Celine was back to the state that she was supposed to be in. What? You weren't expecting that? Not only Celine, even Jack was surprised that Caitlin didn't know that Celine would recover her memories when Jack got here. Of course, I wasn't expecting that. Caitlin knew that things might get a little complicated. So, she went ahead and gave her explanation about what had happened. She made sure to make things clear so that there would be no assumptions that would be made. And although she was sure that Jack already knew about it, she just explained in case there was something that he had missed. Is it that serious? Celine asked after Caitlin finished explaining. It surely is. As long as I can remember, and wasn't someone that would lie about something serious. Back then, that's before your memories of each other were sealed. She said that there was something serious that was about to happen. Caitlin stated. I'm not sure about what it was that she was talking about but she had said that it was something big. And if the two of us were closer to her, we would get involved in something that would surely be risky. And, although I had tried convincing her that it wasn't necessary and that I would be together with her, she then told me that it was something that only she could handle. As for Jack, although he was the one that was closest to her, she said that nothing would happen to him. So, as I can see Jack here, I can only assume that what she was speaking about was true. But, there is something that I don't understand at all. But all the same, I think that whatever she was talking about was definitely something that caused her death. Caitlin finished. At this moment, Jack could see that she was sad. And, her emotions weren't fake ones as Jack could tell if she was simply acting. But, what was confusing him was definitely the matter concerning his mother's death. That was exactly something that he had known about. His mother was killed by Marion, and he had already killed her. But, he was wondering if it was true that his mother was afraid that Marion would try attacking Caitlin and Celine. Although Jack thought that it was possible, he doubted that she would take the risk considering the risk that was involved in offending the Gravy family. Alfonso family was definitely nothing in the eyes of the Gravy family. They would be destroyed the moment that they attempted something like that. But he still couldn't find an answer. It seemed that he would have to do a little more research about his mother's case. Then, Caitlin looked at Celine and asked, Do you now understand why I was prohibiting you from the relationship that you mentioned to me? 
Celine's mouth hung open when she heard that. But at the same time, she could only say that she was indeed a lucky girl. On the other hand, Jack was definitely surprised that there was a relationship that Caitlin didn't approve of. He wondered who it was that had beat him to it and dated Celine first before he was stopped. Hiki, Celine chuckled. She then looked at her mother and asked, Mother, do you even know who it was that I was dating that you decided to stop me from continuing? It doesn't matter anyway. Although she was curious, Caitlin didn't think that it was necessary for her to know who it was that Celine was so adamant on dating. Mom, it matters. After all, I was dating Jack. In fact, although you had said that you wouldn't approve of our relationship, I still considered myself his girl. And that's exactly the reason as to why I told him where I was. Celine said with a smile. Ignoring the shocked expressions of the two, she continued. I had wanted you to see him so that you could know who he was and that you not approving of our relationship wasn't the best choice. In the end, who knew that the two of us were fated? When he got here, you were actually the one that had sent him over to me. And it turned out that the person that I'm dating is the one that I grew up with. Celine smiled at the end of it, enjoying the expressions that were on the faces of the two. But she didn't enjoy for long as just a few seconds later, the two of them recovered, to her disappointment. Caitlin looked at Jack and asked, when did the two of you meet? This time, she wasn't curious about the time that they had met because she wanted to prevent them from being together. Instead, she was genuinely curious about something. This should be the second month since we first met. After the sealing of our memories, of course. Jack replied, Did you have your memories back then? Caitlin asked. This was what she was most curious about. Even Celine looked at Jack, wanting to know about it. Jack simply shook his head in response. Then, he said, I really had no memory of her at all. It was just that I felt familiar with her, but I couldn't explain why. As for the memories, I only recovered them yesterday after I dropped Celine back at home. Caitlin laughed loudly and said, I guess that the two of you are really meant to be together with each other. All the same, I won't say anything about your relationship anymore. You can move at your pace, but I hope that you don't go past the line before the right time. Celine blushed at her mother's words. But all the same, she looked at Jack with a happy smile on her face. Now that her mother had approved the relationship between the two of them, she didn't think that there would be any other obstacle that would stand in their path of love, or so she thought. Mom, you should never doubt my eyes. Celine stated smugly. Caitlin simply laughed at that. But at the same time, she was thinking of something that was troubling her mind. I wonder what will happen with that young man. I hope that he doesn't do anything to the two of them. Otherwise, I would be willing to give up everything for their sake.